Okay, so there was a customer that asked just recently if it was possible to pattern joints. And the short answer is no. Um, I wanted to show how this works. Um, we have uh, a very simple assembly here, two plates with uh, a pattern of holes that have been created. Those uh, two plates have been turned into components and I already have a norm part um, inserted and I used a rigid joint to do that. You can see it right here. So if I went in and tried to make a pattern of this, let's make a circular pattern to follow those holes. Um, one thing you have to remember about all the pattern types and a couple other commands as well is that you can uh, choose what you want to pattern. Faces, bodies, features, or components. Uh, probably should do some videos on that too, but in this particular case, I'll sort of assume you know what that means. But in any case, in this case, we would be taking components and I'll take this. Now, what you might want to like to do is somehow take that as well. Um, a joint is not a component, however. And just to check it out and make sure, I went through and tried to uh, do it with features, uh, even bodies, um, and I guess I'll just go ahead and do it right now, faces. Can't do any of that. You cannot pattern those. It will not be accepted as a pattern um, element. Um, kind of a nice idea. I have to think about how that uh, would work program it, uh, in the programming. In any case, I can take that and then I can select an axis and uh, since it's the same number in standard, I have three. Now, that looks pretty good. And as a matter of fact, um, it would be the most performant of, of all the solutions because actually joints um, cause quite a lot of uh, computational load on any system. So if you have a whole assembly with tons of these things in there, um, this would all these extra joints would cause a lot of uh, computational load. So if you can get away with doing this this way, um, this would be better. As a matter of fact, um, it would probably be better, um, generally even, if you just uh, got rid of all the fasteners completely. You could, if you so wished, at any time, uh, put a new component in there, call this a norm part. Um, I should probably name it the same thing as what it was. It's going to be an empty component. It's not going to be activated. It's going to be there, and it will actually be there, but there is no part. This would be a great way to get a bomb or a material uh, list of materials that would have your uh, fasteners in there, but wouldn't put a computational load on there. Um, you know, it's one thing to think about, and I always advise people, and it doesn't matter what system you're using, not to use uh, norm parts at all because what you really want, you want them in the in the build of materials. You don't want them in the model. Generally, you don't need them in the model. There are exceptions. You might need those that data for um, weight calculations and that sort of thing. So I don't want to say that generally, but it's just something to think about. But if you have these and you put them in, then you might want to just leave them like this because they're in the right place. They look right. Everything's fine. But keep in mind, if you grab them like this, they'll move. Now, um, when you do this, right, you'll get this little thing up here. You have to be, imagine this. Um, I'll show you what happens if you choose revert. It just goes back. Nothing changes. This is primarily because maybe you want to move things out of the way to get a better look, see things better, and then you've decided this is just temporary, so you're going to revert back to the original position. Um, if you move these on purpose, and I'm just going to do it here by eyeball, but of course you could use commands like uh, move copy and all this sort of stuff too, and you really wanted to put these things in these new places, then you would say capture position. And watch what happens when you do that. Down here, there is a capture position in here. This is unique to Fusion because in Fusion, we allow you to move bodies, components, and everything else, and those moves are in the timeline. Um, I won't go into it in great detail here, but in most other systems, moves of this sort are either not possible or they are not anywhere in the timeline. So um, that can make them problematic, but it's just something to think about. This is, this is what happens when you do this. So, okay, let's go undo, undo again. We've got these things here, and let's say you can't live with them being free in space. Um, you do want to have your joints. Unfortunately, we can't pattern those for you, but what can we do? Well, there are two different kinds of joints. The one I used to originally put it in here moves the parts. It put, defines position and function. 
all right? The other one here is an as-built join, and this one defines only function. And it is useful when the parts are already in the positions where they should be. This will happen with this case. It will also happen with most imported files, like a step file or something, because everything comes in the right places. They're just not related to one another as their function. So you would use here, in this case, an as-built joint. And you could say, I will um, select this part, and I will select this part, and they will be rigidly joined. If I select this part first and that part second, then it will automatically put this symbol at the middle. That's not all that super great. Um, I think it might be better to go the other way around. So let's do it again. Right mouse button, repeat as joint. And this time, if I go from this one to that one, it will put a, a, a rigid joint symbol uh, over here, which may be a little bit nicer for you. Now, that's one way to do it, but now I have one, two, three rigid joints. And it's not very difficult, but if you have 5,280 of these, you're um, gonna be clicking for quite a while. Another way to do this, and let me just undo all this stuff so that there, we're back to this uh, undefined state. One other way to do this um, would to be go in here and say, create a rigid group, yeah? And if you create a rigid group, you could actually go in here, select this, select that, select all this. You can even do a window select on all of it. And uh, since I already have one, it's giving me um, another warning saying, hey, you already have one here. Do you want it? I'll continue, yes. And then you can say uh, all these will be a rigid joint, a rigid, rigid group. And I could actually get rid of this one. Now, uh, wait, that is not what I expected have to figure that one out. I don't know exactly why that is the way it is, but in any case, I have to examine that. That is quite interesting, actually. Um, if I delete it, it is gone completely. I'm gonna have to investigate that myself, but if I suppress that, we still have all these, and these are, oh, well, that one's, ah, we have a rigid group between this and this. So if I go back and undo, and then edit my rigid group because I forgot to uh, add one component to it, yes. And I will add this component to this as well. Then what we've got in this case is the special case of everything being all connected as one, right? So they're all in one big rigid group. You can still move it around because uh, nothing is actually fixed in space, so I would probably take this one and ground it so that it is fixed in space that will make everything move around. We do have a chat capture and position. Um, not exactly sure where that one came from, so let's revert. Uh, it's this one here because of the rigid joint. That's quite interesting. I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit further. But in any case, I hope this helped you. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot pattern those joints, but um, perhaps knowing about rigid groups and use, being able to use the um, as-built joint will make things a little bit quicker and easier for you if you have a lot of them to do. Here again, let me uh, mention one more time, I would recommend going without um, um, norm parts uh, completely and just putting them in as uh, parts so that you can see them on your materials list or if you um, create your materials list by hand or using another data management or PLM solution or something like that, you may well consider um, just adding those um, connectors in that system instead of your CAD. That would be by far the most efficient method, although there are some drawbacks. So I hope this helped you. Thank you very much.